The IMPO 132 study is a study that compared the combination of chemotherapy and chemotherapy and immunotherapy. Then the background is that we know that we have in lung cancer an efficacy of the PD-1 and PDL1 agent with more with three agents that are al already uh, uh, registered uh, in this uh, in this field in the second line setting, and we had uh, uh, several studies presented combining chemotherapy and immunotherapy. Then we were missing data from the combination of atezolizumab with the combination of carboplatin and pimetrexed and also look at some specific subgroups as the never smokers, patients recruited in Asia, patients with older age and, uh, and so on. Then it's what uh, has been presented at the ESMO uh, 2018. Okay, and how many patients were available in these smaller groups? Then uh, overall 578 patients have been included in the study and uh, the, uh, the proportion of patients recruited in Asia is the largest that we have to date in this type of study. 25% of the patients recruited in the study. For the never smokers patients it represents 12% of the patients included in the study and uh, for the patients that uh, uh, were older than 65 years it represents approximately the half of the patients because the median age was 64 years. And can you talk about some of the results from these individual groups? Then, what was interesting in the IMPOR 132 trial, we demonstrated an advantage regarding the progression-free survival with an average ratio of 0 0.60. The overall survival, survival data are not yet mature, but there was a numerical advantage with an hazard ratio of 0 0.81. Then, looking at the, uh, the subgroups, what demonstrated all the analysis that have been done is that there was reproducibility of the activity and the superiority of the combination of chemotherapy based on platinum and pimetrexate and atezolizumab over the standard chemotherapy in all subgroups but the patients with liver metastasis at baseline. Then we had an advantage for the combination in never smokers patients with even a slightly better uh, hazard ratio of 0.49. Uh, it's a population of interest because we know that those patients may have tumor with less inflammation and less chance to have the immune system uh, 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 working, then it was important to confirm that the benefits was there for these patients. If for the patients recruited in Asia, we have uh, an even better uh, hazard ratio of 0 0.42 and an increase by five months of the median progression free survival from 5.5 to more than 10 months. And I think it's something that is also important to know because that we have a large uh, uh, proportion of patients that were never smokers in these populations, even if the patients with EGFM is a tumor were excluded. And we do not fully understand this difference of activity in the Asian patients compared to the, uh, the patients recruited outside Asia. It may be related to, to some clinical factors. It may be related to some biological factor. And the biological study of, the, uh, uh, of these older biomarkers are, is ongoing. When can we expect that further analysis to be available? Then we expect to have uh, the overall survival data in the first half of 2019 along with probably the, an, the role analysis of the biomarkers in order to better understand what support the activity in the different subgroups. Okay. And in more general terms, what do these findings mean for well, the successes of PD-1 in lung cancer? I think just, just before, maybe just saying a word about the patients with liver metastasis, I think it's important because we have the stratification by the presence of liver metastasis only in the IMPOWER studies. And we have two studies presented today, the IMPOWER 130 and the IMPOWER 132, that show that there was no benefit for the patients with liver metastasis to receive the combination of chemo and immuno. It may be related to various factors. One may be the high level of VGF synthesis. And then conversely, we have the results of the IMPOR 150 trial that showed that when combining the chemo, the ATIZO, then the PDL1 inhibitors, and the VGF inhibitors, then you can get a better result in the patient with liver meds. Then it's just, I think, maybe a factor that was not fully considered in the past that we should not consider when deciding the treatment. And then on to what this means. And on the, 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 the PDL1 inhibition in, in lung cancer, I think we had several studies in the second line setting 
we have now uh, around 10 studies in the first line setting, either in monotherapy or the combination of IO plus IO or combination of chemo and IO with more than five positive trials in, uh, with atiso based on atezolizumab, then I think that we have now a large uh, opportunities of combination of uh, to offer immunotherapy to lung cancer patients. But we have to understand what are the patients that benefit the most from this kind of combination, what are the patients that may be treated with only a monotherapy, and what are the patients that are resisting very early to this kind of combination and needs to be, uh, to be proposed another kind of uh, treatment.